What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Newswave. It was a long weekend for some of us. We had a pretty fun spawn cast. It was kind of all over the place at times, but we had some fun. I uh, had a lot of fun talking to you guys on there. It was a good time overall. Looked at Radiation Island on the Nintendo Switch. And of course, on Friday, we took a look at Payday 2, which is out tomorrow on the Nintendo Switch. So a little bit of a busy weekend, working on a couple other projects in the background as well. But we did get a winner for the Kirby Nendoroid, the one I actually really like. I, I really like that Samus one. That Samus one was really cool, but the Kirby one makes a lot of sense right now. And that is going to Robert. So congratulations to Robert. I put the announcement on Twitter yesterday. So that is all done. We hit 85,000 subs. And now the next one does start. I told you guys we'd be doing giveaways up to 100,000 subscribers. And the one starting now, today, that you can go down the link and get started right now, is for the Breath of the Wild Link Nendoroid. I actually, I really like the look of this one. It's really cool. The Nendoroid uh, figures are really neat because they come with a bunch of different poses, different ways you can pose them, uh, different items and accessories that come with them to kind of attach to the figure. And this one looks really cool. I love the look of it. That one is being given away at 90,000 subscribers. So, so check the link down in the description. You can get entered right now for a chance to win that, and we'll draw when we hit that milestone. Now, today we had a bunch of stuff to go over, including an interesting visit between Sega and Microsoft that we have to take a look at, some different games being added to Game Pass, one big one in particular, and then some being removed, and then we have to talk a bit about that DICE Awards, because uh, let's just say Nintendo had a pretty big presence there, so let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to get into today is Pokemon Day. That is tomorrow. Pokemon Day is... Tomorrow, and that celebrates the day that Red and Green, that's right, Green, launched in Japan back in 1996. And then eventually we, we did get it in the States as Red and Blue. And this is a time of year that everyone who's part of that fandom really gets together and just celebrates really an anniversary for this entire franchise. It's so large now that it does have its own day. It's just not really recognized by banks or schools or anything else but it's pretty cool to see it is the exact day that it came out february 27th but of course what's the one thing people are talking about right now that is pokemon on the nintendo switch because everyone wants to know what's going on there so what do you think fans are expecting tomorrow some kind of announcement for that switch game will we get one that's hard to say more than likely no what we probably will see is a combination of things for example we could see something related to the trading card game whether it's a new new series new cards maybe a special edition card to like commemorate the day we might see something for the detective pikachu game or we might honestly just see something for the upcoming movie Sure, we could have something for the Pokemon Switch game, but more than likely, that's something Nintendo wants to do on their time. That is something that you headline a Nintendo Direct with, absolutely, or just give its own Nintendo Direct to. It's not really something you would just spur the moment, announce, and throw stuff out there. Could they announce a Direct tomorrow and say, listen, guys, uh, you know, celebrating Pokemon Day, we're going to do a whole Direct in two days about the new Switch game. Sure, I don't think it would spur the moment, just pop up with screenshots or or some kind of trailer about it. No, they want to hype it up and they want all eyes to be on it. Rightfully so. It's, it's a big enough game. It's a big enough series to push the Nintendo Switch even further. So consider Pokemon Day a day for people to just celebrate the series. They're already probably going to do stuff in Pokemon Go. Uh, of course, they'll do uh, some cool stuff online. They're counting down really to it on their on their Twitter handle right now where they keep counting down. They did six, five, four, three, and, and they're going to keep going until they hit that day and we'll see what they do. But more than likely, it's just going to be a day for fun with little things here and there. Uh, no, I don't think anything really big will come out of it, but I mean, honestly, who knows? It, it's always possible. Next up, let's talk about Sega visiting Microsoft. Yeah, it's very odd here, but Sega posted on their Japanese Twitter handle pictures of them walking up to Microsoft's headquarters, taking pictures of the Microsoft sign, taking pictures of Sonic next to some displays they had inside of the Xbox, the Xbox 360, the original Xbox, and honestly just pictures of them being around the headquarters and the offices. So it was very weird. It caught a lot of people off guard because Here's Sega going to Microsoft offices for something. Now, what could they be going to? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, Marcus Sellers, for example, when I put this out on Twitter, said Vanquish 2. Maybe. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say there. Something I would like to see because Microsoft does absolutely need to go out and get some games. <laughs> we know this, right? Sure, Sea of Thieves is coming. State of Decay 2 is coming. Crackdown 3 is coming. Probably the one that I'm really excited for out of those is Sea of Thieves because I played the beta. It was fun, but 
we need something to appeal to the Japanese audience. Now, they, of course, have things like East Origin coming out soon, right? We did see that. Shining Resonance is also coming to it. But Sega, you could go there and get a, a, a dormant franchise even. Like, we, like sure, Marcus says Vanquish 2. Sure, that, that's possible. But um, what about something like Panzer Dragoon? We haven't seen Pan's Dragoon since uh, Pan's Dragoon Orta actually on the original Xbox back in 2002. Pan's Dragoon, I think, is a series that there is a niche audience for. And the really, the audience there is so hardcore, I think you would actually sell Xboxes just because of this game. It's something that those fans really want. Now, the Saturn games, there is a rumor that the source code that would let them remaster something like Sagas is lost to time, which is kind of unfortunate that's the case. And there's a rumor going around that would kind of explain why we haven't seen a remaster yet with a game that is just obscenely expensive, through the roof expensive. We're talking three, four, five hundred dollars depending on its condition. But I would like to see Panzer Dragoon come back on the Xbox console in some way, even if I guess if they remaster Orta, but really, you know, go all out and, and try to make something really cool with some Microsoft funding and, and Sega to put this thing together. Because that, that would be really neat to see. Next up, let's talk about what I, I think, honestly, is the best value in gaming right now. And that is Game Pass on the Xbox. Now, if you don't have Game Pass or know what it is, it is a service where you can pay $10 a month. And it's Netflix style, where you get access to a bunch of different games that you download locally to your machine. You do not stream them. Now, the big promise here by Microsoft is, of course, day one first party titles. Sea of Thieves will be, the, will be there day one. They even name things like Gears of War, Forza, Future Titles, all of that. But they also need to continue to bolster lineup with third-party titles, and it seems like they're going to be doing just that in March. Larry Herb, or of course Major Nelson, posted a tweet that showed eight different titles, kind of turned around with the one at the top flipped around so we can see the spine, and it is Tomb Raider. Awesome. That is, that is a good game to bring over. The latest Tomb Raider is absolutely an awesome game. It has benefited from the Xbox One X enhancements. But, of course, the one thing they always tell us in the small print is, as games come in, games will be cycled out. And we actually got a list showing us just that. Now, this list here you're seeing was posted by TrueAchievements.com, and it shows 12 that are leaving, starting with Capcom, Arcade Cabinet, D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die, Dark Void, Flock, Iron Brigade, Joe Danger to the Moon, Movie, Monday Night Combat, N+, Sega Vintage Collection Streets of Rage, Sega Vintage Collection Monster World, Strider, and Virtual Fighter 5 Final Showdown. Now, a lot of those games, D4 is cool, but it's a smaller game. Virtual Fighter 5, that's, that's probably good for fighting game fans. There's nothing on the list that really matches the game they're adding with something like Rise of the Tomb Raider, the latest Tomb Raider, sure. And then there are also seven other titles. They could also be smaller titles, sure. But in this case, having something like Rise of the Tomb Raider on there while it's been out for a little while, there are probably a lot of people who just completely missed that game, even though it's a very good game. And now the X is out and it has that X enhancement for 4K and everything, and even better frame rate in some cases for their frame rate mode. It's really cool to see that. I think it just makes Game Pass worth that much more. You're going to have Rise of the Tomb Raider and then apparently seven other games. How big will they be? We'll see when that announcement comes. You'll have that. And then, of course, you'll have Sea of Thieves on the first day. So I'm I'm excited for that. And I've already played Rise of the Tomb Raider. I have it on my PC. Uh, I, ha I bought it on the Xbox One when it came out. So technically, I've already played through it and everything. But for people who have not played it, great time to pick it up. It's an awesome game. And if you've played Tomb Raider before, you could jump right in and have a great time with it. Next up, let's talk about a game that kind of disappeared from a radar. In fact, I did a video about Switch titles that just disappeared or have gone missing uh, a couple months ago, and I talked about one in particular, which is Seasons of Heaven. Do you remember that game? It, it was one of the first Switch titles that we saw, and we were like, wow, this looks amazing. This looks really good. Like, the visual quality was great. They talked about Unreal Engine 4. They didn't use the Switch logo, which they talked about in this interview why they didn't use it, but but YouTuber Super Metal Dave actually reached out and got a hold of them. In fact, he did a full interview and a full write-up. The write-up that also has the interview for the video linked to it is down in the description. You'll check it out. Awesome read, by the way. There is a lot of insight here and a ton of details about this game. And yes, this game is still alive. Now, Dave managed to secure an interview with creative di director and writer behind Seasons of Heaven, Nico Augusto, and 
It's interesting about this game is it has a lot to also do with the trilogy of books that are being written currently, the Seasons of Heaven books. And what's cool here is the books will actually be missing pages intentionally. And these missing pages from those novels will in turn be in the video games itself to connect the story together through both the book and the game. Now this interview and the write-up is just packed with a ton of details from there being no microtransactions, by the way. In fact, they even shopped it around to some publishers and a lot of them actually wanted them to include multiplayer and microtransactions. I wonder which publishers would do that. I, I couldn't think of any, could you? And what's really cool here is they're using all of their own money so there's no influence from outside, uh, really outside forces. When you get, when you go to bigger companies and they want you to do things, you kind of have to say, all right, let's do it. We're using your money. In this case, they're using their own, which is great. Other details, including they actually have the music composer from the Castlevania Lords of Shadow series, which was actually pretty good in terms of music. So it seems like they're set up pretty well here. The other thing they didn't really get into, and they might not even have it, is any kind of release window. But I I'm actually happy to see that there is at least some information here. There's communication, and it, it looks like it's coming. It's happening. So there you go. If you were excited about Seasons of Heaven... It, just know that it is coming at some point. No actual release time or anything like I said, but so far it looks good. The interview was like 45 minutes long, and I actually think it's worth a listen. So even if you have uh, some stuff to do or something, you're at the gym, just throw on some headphones and listen to it. It was very worth it. Very cool backstory, by the way, to this game uh, overall. I don't want to spoil any of that for you guys. Just go listen to it. It was, it was pretty good. But no, guys, Seasons of Heaven is not gone. It's not missing in action yet. It is still coming. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the DICE Awards because Nintendo had a big presence there. They won a lot of awards, we'll say that. I'm not going to go through all of them because that would take a while and you would just hear Nintendo's name quite a bit. In fact, they actually dubbed the person who kept coming up Mr. Nintendo because they seemed to send one guy and he probably walked a couple miles just back and forth for how much time he had to get up and walk back and forth to get the awards and everything. But the big, really some of the big, I guess, winners here would have been Zelda, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Cuphead, yes, Cuphead won some awards. Now we're gonna go ahead and go through some of them here. Breath of the Wild won Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction, Outstanding Achievement in Game Design, and Adventure Game of the Year. Horizon Zero Dawn won two awards, Outstanding Technical Achievement, and Outstanding Achievement in Story, and Cuphead actually won more than Horizon Zero Dawn from what I'm seeing here. Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition, Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction, and Outstanding Achievement in Animation. I also wanna point out the Persona <laughs> they can't seem to, to, to win anything when it comes to RPGs, which is the weirdest thing. Persona lost out to uh, Near Automata when it came to best RPG. I, it's weird. All of the award shows I've, I've seen pretty much snubbed Persona completely, which is crazy. Got a ton of nominations most times, right? It was even nominated for Game of the Year back when it was with, uh, with the Game Awards, but sort of PUBG, so I mean, how much does a nomination actually <laughs> mean there? But still... Persona didn't really seem to catch any breaks when it when it came to a lot of award shows like these, and uh, it's still a great game. It's just it was really weird for me to see Near beat out Persona when it came to RPG of the Year. I think that one should have gone to Persona. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for News Wave today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. Really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave a bunch of comments down below about everything you talked about today. Whether it's Pokemon Day, Pokemon Day. I always say Pokemon weird. Pokemon Day. It's tomorrow, the 27th. Let me know if you're expecting anything. Thing, or if you're just thinking, you know what, they're just going to celebrate, they're going to have fun, maybe we'll see a limited edition card, some information about the movie, but you're not really expecting a big Switch announcement, whether it's screenshots, gameplay, information, nothing. It, it, let me know where you are with those expectations. Let me know what you think about Seasons of Heaven, getting some information. It sounds like it's still on. We, we were getting worried because we hadn't heard anything, but it looks like there is a pretty cool backstory to it, and it looks like they are hard at work at bringing this game out at some point to the Nintendo Switch exclusively, by the way. They did mention that more and more in that interview. Again, check it out exclusively to Nintendo Switch. Also, let me think about the DICE Awards or Sega, of course, visiting Microsoft. What do you think is happening there? Do you think it was just a routine visit? Or do you think they have plans for something coming up in the future? Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.